now it's time to do some graphing in statistics. So let's see, what have we learned so far? We learned to randomly collect data, sort the data, found a class width for a specific number of classes, complete the frequency distribution table, and uh, our table is going to have the following columns class limits and boundaries, class midpoints, frequencies, cumulative frequencies, relative frequencies, and percentage frequencies. We're going to use each column to do uh, certain graphs. So we had uh, an example of uh, 40 exams. The data were not sorted, and we want to take uh, five classes in this frequency distribution table. So we did this problem in the previous uh, chapter. We organized our frequency distribution table. This is what we had. The graphs that we're going to do will be bar chart histogram, ogive, frequency polygon, pie chart, and stem plot. For each one of these graphs, we need to use certain columns from the frequency distribution table. Let's make our first uh, graph for bar chart. For the bar chart, we need class limits and class frequencies. We place the class limits on the horizontal axis, and we use the class frequencies for the height of each bar. And our graph is going to look like this. Now notice that when we do bar chart, there is a gap between different bars. Now let's make a histogram. For the histogram, we need class boundaries and class frequencies. And very similar to making a bar chart, we put the class boundaries on the horizontal axis, and we use the class frequencies for the height of each bar. Now unlike the bar chart, the histogram since they share common boundary, they will be attached to each other, unless there is a class that has zero frequency. In that case, there will be a gap. Our next graph would be ogive. For ogive, we need class boundaries, and we need cumulative frequencies. We place the class boundaries on the horizontal axis, and we use the cumulative frequencies for the height of each point. And then we use a straight line to connect these points in order to complete the ogive graph. So our first class boundary was 52.5, which had a frequency 0. That was just a boundary. And then the next one had a frequency 14, which is the same as the cumulative frequencies. And then the second cumulative frequency was 26, and 33, 36, and 40, as you can refer to the table. And all we need to do is connect these dots together. The ogive graph, it's usually increasing unless you have a class with a zero frequency. In that case, it will be a horizontal line. The ogive graph is always closed on the left-hand side and will be going always to the right. Now let's draw frequency polygon. For the frequency polygon, we need class midpoints 
and we need class frequencies. We place the class midpoints with two additional ones on each side on the horizontal axis. And then we use the class frequencies for the height of each class midpoint. We connect these points to complete the frequency polygon graph. So we had a class midpoint of 57.5, 67.5, all the way to 97.5. We add class width to go to the right, so we're going to get another extra midpoint of 107.5, and then we subtract class width in order to get to the one on the left side, the 47.5. And we use the frequency of each midpoint in order to come up with the height, and then we connect them in order to finish the frequency polygon graph. OK, now let's go ahead and construct a pie chart. We need frequency uh, distribution table, the column with the heading percentage frequency. Or we can use the relative frequency. We can use central angle for each slice of the pie chart. To do that, we take the relative frequency times 360 degrees, which is right around the circle. And this gives us an indication each slice has, you know, how many degrees of the central angle. And we divide and label the circle by using the central angle and the percentage frequency. So in our uh, frequency distribution table, we had a class with 35%, 10%, 7.5%, 17.5%, .5 and 30%. So we use the 360 degrees for around the circle and the relative frequency to figure out what would be the size of each slice. And then we place the percentage of each class right next to the edge. Our last graph is making stem plot. When you do a stem plot, you need to make sure that we have a sorted raw data. And then we identify the leaf, which is the rightmost digit. And the rest of them would be the stem. So this is our stem plot for the exam scores. So the key says 5 line 3, that means 53. 10 line 0 would be 100. So as you see, the data is sorted. So we have 53, 55, another 55, 56, another 56, and so on and so forth. So the last row, that's a display for 100. The row before the last one, that would be the dis display for the 90, 98, 98, and 99. I hope this presentation helped you understand how to do statistical graphs.